Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. This video has been in the works for some time, I'm not gonna lie, you probably would have got it earlier but as I've mentioned before I've been a little bit ill recently so in today's video I would like to show you my top 10 color changing philodendron. It's funny, this video was originally just top 10 color changing plants until I looked at my list and I realized every single one of them was a philodendron. So in this list today, you will find plants of various levels of affordability. Some are right on the top end, some are quite affordable. And in that, you will get a range of colors. So it depends on what you like, on what shapes you like, on what colors you like, on what type of plants you like. Do you like bushy plants? Do you like climbing plants? This is the video for you if you want something a little bit different. Also, if you don't want to spend money on variegation, I might have a couple of options for you that are totally safe and they won't revert. So without further ado, let's get started. Now these are actually ranked and it's not something I usually do, but I thought why not? Let's do it. In at number 10, I have a plant for you that has really pretty leaves and it does of course change color. My plant coming in at number 10 is the Philodendron Bipenifolium aurea, also known as a Philodendron Violin aurea. It really depends. I know a lot of suppliers refer to this as violin. It does have a few names even different to that. But if you look for Philodendron Bipenifolium aurea, that should get you in the direction you need to go. Now, as far as I remember, these plants were quite affordable. Now, I was selling them last year in the mid to high double digit range. Plus, it's a mid double digit range really. I don't know what they are now. I haven't done a price check unfortunately as this video is not actually about price but if you do want one of these you can probably find one. So the cool thing about these plants you might be able to see is that ah, they're so good. They change a lot right between immaturity and maturity. So when they are immature you get this cute little chubby shaped leaf and it does have whiskers and it does have a little bulbous tip on the leaf. Now I'm going to show you very quickly a picture of a mature one when they get older. Now it's probably green, it might not be yellow or anything like that because it's easier to show you a fully grown bipenifolium. So this is what they look like when they're fully mature. Again, just doing this to show the shape of it for you, but you will see how this is one of these plants where when it's young it looks great, when it's mature it looks great. It changes a lot. Now that's not the same for every plant out there. Some plants just look great when mature, and when they're young, they look a bit boring. I can't say that for these plants. I think they're great. These plants start off with a golden yellow leaf and over time they fade to green. I'm looking at one now on my phone. They're a really, really nice plant. Honestly, they really, really are. They're just so pretty. Now they are very simplistic and there are a lot of stuff on this list that are more intricate and more exuberant than these. But this is a very affordable option. If you just want to dabble into something that changes colour a little bit and you don't have a high budget, I think these are great for that. And I do recommend them. Right, the next plant on my list is not it's not super popular actually but I wanted to include it because it does change colour and I thought it'd be a good option for those of you that like the more darker plants. So this plant is a little bit similar in shape to the last one sort of. This is actually a hybrid plant so it's very cool. This here I'm showing you is a hybrid of Philodendron Florida and Philodendron Black Cardinal. This plant is usually known as Philodendron Florida Bronze. I have occasionally called it Cardinal Beauty because I like it much more but I don't think that name stuck. Sometimes I I sell it as that. Sometimes I sell it as Florida bronze. It kind of depends. You'll see it if I sell it. I do have some. This, as I mentioned before, it's a similar shape to the last plant, but the leaves come in a kind of reddish brown. I don't know if I've got anything to show you other than the picture. This is kind of the color that it comes in. So it's not brown, it's not red, it's in between. Actually, that's not a bad representation of the color that they come in. So they come in this color and they do fade down to green, but because the plant is a hybrid with black cardinal, it's not your average green. It's much deeper. It is like a deep moss green. It's not your very stereotypical, you know, houseplant green. So for that reason, I wanted to introduce it because it's honestly very, very pretty. And they do grow very, very long in leaf shape. It's very, very nice. And I think if you want a darker option, this is possibly your boy because I'm pretty sure looking at this picture here, it does have very dark petioles. Sorry, I'm not in my shop. I can't just look at the plant right now. I'm still recovering. But it's a very, very nice one. It's very understated. It's very underrated. Not many people go for it, but I can attest that they're absolutely brilliant and they ship well and they grow well and they're just generally very tough. They're very, very rigid. I know that sounds really weird, but when they grow, their petioles and the leaves, it's a very, very tough structure. It's almost like a monstera rather 
rather than a philodendron. Really, really weird. If you own them, you might know what I'm talking about. They're just made of tougher stuff, I think, than other philodendrons. So if you want something a little bit on the deeper side, a bit of a deeper shade, this could be your boy. The next plant on my list coming in at number eight is amazing. This plant has always been a classic. And best of all, this plant is reasonably obtainable. This is the Philodendron Prince of Orange. And as the name might suggest, you get a million shades of orange with this plant. This plant is gorgeous. I believe I own one plant. It's not getting enough light at the minute, so it's not going very orange, which is something I will say about these plants. And honestly, any plant on this list does suffer from this. You need to bump the light a little bit and keep it a bit warm and you will get the best colour out of any of the plants on this list, literally any one of them. But this plant is like the ideal autumnal plant, or if you're you're just a lover of orange, orange is your favourite colour, this is absolutely the plant for you. You need to look no further, it's fantastic. Now, unlike the first two plants I've mentioned on this list, this plant does grow in a more compact rosette kind of shape. It's very bushy. So if you're not a fan of the idea of, you know, a super, super tall, fast-growing upwards plant, then this is a really nice option for you as well because it will stay more compact. Obviously, the more light you give it, the more compact it will be. That goes for nearly any plant ever, to be quite honest. So if you want to keep it compact, bump the light. If you want to keep it extra orange, bump the light, bump the heat a little bit. I absolutely think these are great. And every time you see them in nurseries in big chunks, you know, in huge rows, it just looks amazing. It's like autumn come to life. So for that reason, I do genuinely recommend them. So colourful, so beautiful. And if the picture doesn't say enough, what can, really? What can? Right, I have one of these in my studio and it needs it needs a little bit more light actually, but this is quite a good alternative to a couple of other plants on this list actually as it happens. I do think it's a little bit more expensive. I think the prices went up a little bit. This is your first white plant on this list that goes from a white creamy colour down to a green colour, except there are a couple of added extras with this plant. It's not just that simple. This plant is the Philodendron Snowdrift. Now then, this plant is not quite a full climber like the, um, you know, like the, the Cardinal Beauty or the Florida Bronze, I should say, that we mentioned in at number nine, I believe. It's not as lengthy as that and it's not as compact as a Prince of Orange. It's kind of in the middle. So it's a climber, but it can be a little bit more compact than your average climber. Does that make any sense? So not only that, the leaves do appear to be quite wide and paddly and they have kind of like a wave around the leaf margin. It's very, very nice. Not only that, but these leaves tend to emerge a really minty white colour, but you get these really dark kind of speckles all over the leaf, all over it. And when the leaves do emerge, I think I've got a picture here, yeah, the main veins on the plant and the petiole come in a really hot, bright pink. This does fade down over time, obviously. Every plant on this list, the leaves do eventually fade down, hence I'm calling them colour changing. But this one, you do get some extra colours in there. You get your white, you get your dark green at the same time, and you do get a little bit of pink, which is really nice. Now, that's not often found in plants, to be honest. In terms of colour changing, it's quite difficult. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's only one other plant in this list that does that, that I'll get onto a little bit later. So for that reason, it's really nice. I'm probably showing you an absolutely gorgeous picture that does show the bright pink petiole, and it does show the pink veining, and it does show the darker flecks of green. It's a stunning, stunning plant, and I think if you want something like that, and you like that leaf shape above all the types of leaf shapes, this is absolutely the plant for you. Now, also, a lot of people prefer white variegation, we're going to call it variegation at times in this list, above yellow variegation. So this is a really good white option. So the next two plants are really good if you want something variegated but you don't want to run the risk of reversion and you don't mind it going away over time. This is a really cool plant coming up. So this is the Philodendron Jungle Fever. Now I have one of these, I'm not in my shop so I can't show you, but these plants come in and they look variegated when they emerge. So the leaves emerge a yellow colour but you can get varying degrees of dark sectoral chunks on the leaves and what it means is it makes it look variegated and it takes a hell of a long time to actually fade and go away. So if you do want variegation but you don't want to pay the price, you don't want to think about reversion, you don't mind it fading away over time and just new leaves being produced look, you know, hot, this is absolutely the one for you. This is one for you, of course, if you prefer yellow variegation. It's a very, very good one for that. The care on these, by the way, is brilliant as well. I can't fault them. I think I have two 
maybe three of these. I don't have many. I only have a couple. I'd like to get more. If people are interested in them, let me know down below. But really, really nice plants. And I do recommend it if you want something a little bit funky, but you don't want to run the risk of paying for something variegated. This plant is always going to be this way. It's not going to stop. So for that reason, I had to include it in my top 10 color changing philodendron. Now you might be thinking, all right, very cool, but I don't like yellow variegation. And honestly, I've mentioned this on this channel before. A lot of people just don't like yellow variegation. A lot of people say, listen, it's not for me. The plant looks ill. I'm not about it. Well, for you, I have the Philodendron Jose Bono. I've talked about this plant so much. This is an absolutely mind-bogglingly beautiful plant. So you get really thick petioles and you get long leaves, but they're kind of paddly at the same time. They're not quite long and thin. They're not quite short and fat. It's really kind of a middle ground. And these get real big, by the way. The white that emerges on these, if you give it the right light, it will be white. It will look like Monstera Albo white, almost. Maybe a hair darker, maybe a hair on the creamy side, but it is really, really, really bright when it comes in and it's beautiful. Now you can get huge sectoral chunks of white very easily on these plants. Obviously it's quite unpredictable, but you do get it quite often. It's not unheard of by any stretch. Not only that, but if you're not lucky enough to hit a nice big sectoral trunk on that new leaf, what you will get are loads of little white patches, kind of like a Monstera Thai constellation, if you've seen the patterning on that. It's a little bit similar. You get these really nice white patches. Now, it will fade down to green, and I'm looking at a picture now, but it takes so long, guys. It takes so long on this plant to fully fade down to green. It takes forever, and I don't even know if it truly fully fades. It stays a long, long time. So if you give this plant good light, good heat, it will just love you forever and it will come in looking absolutely great. It looks really jungly. It is a climber, but it doesn't take too long to size up. It can also grow pretty compact. I've got one at the moment on a pole in my shop and it's growing very, very compact considering it's not in a very bright area. I know that they will grow a lot more compact once they are rooted onto, e.g. a pole. They can tighten up a little bit, which is really nice. So if you want something that is fake white variegated and you don't want to lose your variegation and you want to have a great quick growing plant that propagates well, this is absolutely one for you because they do propagate well as well. They're also very desirable at the minute, probably for this very reason. That's why they're on this list. They're very, very desirable and you can nearly always find it on people's wish lists, to be honest. It's a beautiful, beautiful plant. Now it's time for a little bit of pink. This next plant on my list is, honestly, it's pricey. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's pretty pricey. But the colour change, in my opinion, if you've got the cash, is worth it and they can grow really big. Not only that, but this plant is my first heart-shaped submission on this list. So this also includes the leaf shape in this appeal because, as I've mentioned before, all the other plants have very different leaf shapes to this one. So this is the Philodendron Linamii. This plant, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, it's one of these plants, I will tell you straight up, that they look all right on photographs but not necessarily amazing until you see them in person. And I'm telling you, in person, they look so much better than what they do on photographs. I'm sure you've experienced this kind of thing before. You've seen them on photographs and you think, eh, it's all right. And you see them in person and it's just a completely different ball game. This is honestly the case with this plant. They're really, really good to grow though. And as I mentioned before, they can really size up. They're very sturdy as well. They are a crawler. So if a crawler is something you can put up with, then that's good. Not everyone likes those. By crawler, I mean it grows along a surface. It doesn't grow upwards. It literally, if you had a big wide pot, like this, a big long pot, it would literally grow along the top of it. So it's a bit different to your normal plant, but hey, some people like it. And I had to include it because those leaves come in a beautiful hot pink and there are a few philodendron, I believe, that might do it. Not as strong as this one. I've never seen a plant that does it as strong as this. We're talking pink, we're talking bright pink. So for that reason, it's on this list. Ah. <sighs> The next plant, I'm pretty sure it's going to be on my wish list because I sold one of these and I've never shut up about it, to be honest. I had one in the shop. I think I sold it in 2020 and I've never shut up about it. This next plant is honestly incredible and I have not seen a philodendron quite like this one. Honestly, I can honestly say it's truly unique. This here is the philodendron red moon and you're probably thinking whatever picture I've shown you is photoshopped as hell. It probably isn't. These plants are insane when they come in. It took me a little while to actually ascertain as to what the dominant color was 
course. But I do believe that these plants emerge with a bright yellow leaf, and I mean bright yellow. I mean more yellow than any of the other leaves, actually, as it happens. Way more yellow. Way more yellow than the Berry Penifolium aurea. Way more yellow than the Jungle Fever. Way more yellow than that. This is bright yellow when it comes in. But the best part of this plant is that out of nowhere you get these, and I mean fire red, like red, like fire truck red streaks or chunks or sometimes even the whole leaf that is red and it's a big big chunk of it and it just looks incredible it does this beautiful thing to the caterpillars as well and it comes out this beautiful candy cane kind of color and i'm pretty sure that would mean again i don't own the plant i'm pretty sure that would mean that you could see in the caterpill what kind of color this was going to be and honestly they're just incredible they're beautiful plants i mean i'm looking at an image of one on my phone now and they're just amazing now then i had to do some googling here because i wasn't quite sure if the red held when the leaves went green i'm pretty sure it doesn't but what i can tell you from what I remember is that the yellow will fade down much quicker than the red will when it comes from fading red to green. So the yellow will turn green much faster and you'll be left with a green leaf with a lot of burgundy running through it. So it won't all fade straight away. You will get a few different colour stories, should we say, on the plant. So for that reason, it's so nice and it's so unique. If you don't believe me, Google this plant or go on Instagram and have a look at the tags because honestly, it's quite incredible. So for that reason, I had to put it in at number three on this list because I don't think enough people know about it and I don't think it's getting enough attention whatsoever. I think it's gorgeous. Ah, this was hard. So we have two left and I put this plant at number two and it could be number one. So I'm going to preliminary say that in case I decide to change the order around in a future video. But I had to include this plant at number two because it's incredible. It is one of my favorite plants of all time. Regular viewers of the channel probably guess what it is anyway. It's so good for a variety of reasons. Honestly, this plant is just angelic. It's gorgeous. This is the Philodendron Florida Ghost. And this is another plant if you prefer plants that start off white and fade down to green. This plant starts off with a white leaf, it fades into a minty kind of colour and then it goes green. And the petioles, when the leaf is starting out, they are, I think they're like a berry orangey red kind of vibe. They're not full cherry red, they're not orange, they're kind of in between. This plant as well, very similar to the Bipenifolium aurea, is another plant that looks great when it's young and great when it's mature. It's actually a adorable when it's younger this plant honestly it's one of my favorites for that reason you don't need to wait to get a mature specimen you can just get the tiniest of little plants and you'll just get the most joy you've ever had growing it larger because they just look amazing they kind of look like snow angels when they're fully mature they look brilliant they get loads of little whiskers and loads of little intricacies to the leaves obviously the leaves go through a wonderful journey of color i will say something very quickly on this topic because i say it all the time i can't really mention florida ghost without mentioning this but there was a surge in 2020 of sellers selling Florida Ghost Mint. I need to tell you that they don't exist. Mint does not exist. I'm only talking about Florida Ghost. I have a full video on basically Florida Ghost versus Florida Ghost Mint and why yours is actually a Florida Ghost and what you can do to turn your mint into a normal Florida Ghost and basically to make your Florida Ghost come through really, really white. If that's something you're struggling with, I do have a video that was a little bit more experimental, should we say, but I did that in 2020. So I will link that for you down below if you want to see that after this video. I had to include this plan on this list. Honestly, it's absolutely stunning. I've never really heard of many people getting bored with this plant. It's really beautiful. It's just, oh, it's magnifique. When the plant is fading down, the fade is a very long time. Like a lot of these other plants on this list fade down much faster and the green stage is achieved much quicker. The Florida Ghost is not one of those plants. You can get a plant with a variety of different colored leaves, starting from white down to a mint, down to a light green, down to a green. It's really quite a beautiful plant to grow, especially if you want to grow it, you know, out and have it bushy for that reason. I can't recommend them enough. I'm never going to stop recommending them because I think they're amazing. The last plant I had to put on this list because it's fast becoming popular. It is probably the most expensive plant on this list by quite a way, I'm going to be honest with you, but it is becoming so much more desirable as more people find out about this plant. It's... Oh, 
It's just so beautiful because this plant does a few jobs in one. This plant I'm talking about in number one is the Philodendron Whipple Way. Hopefully I've got a good enough picture to show you. The leaves do something incredibly special. This plant honestly for me has it all. So it's a climber. The leaf shape on this, it changes a lot, but they're actually quite long and pointy. You, it obviously varies on the light and on how much of the plant is, but they can grow very long and pointy. Now you do get dark green flecks in when these leaves emerge. It starts with a lighter color, as always on this video, and then it ends up green. But it never really fully goes green. It stays minty quite a lot like the Florida Ghost for a long period of time. This is quite an extended period of time, but this plant stays very, very light in color. It looks frosted most of the time, to be honest with you. The white tends to stay around the longest, honestly, on most of these types of color changing plants that I've owned, because I've owned nearly every one of these at some point. It stays white for a really long time. That's not the special part though, because this plant doesn't actually start off white. It starts off pink. And when I say pink, I mean, I don't have a color here to show you. It starts off, sorry, I'm gonna grab a palette. It starts off this milkshake kind of pink and it will then turn into a creamy white and then it will fade down to green whilst all the while having dark green flecks running through it. And it is absolutely stunning. It is extremely desirable right now and I'm probably right in saying it's going to be one of the it plants for this year without a doubt because it hasn't had its day yet and it's color changing and who doesn't love a color changing plant that won't revert? So for that reason it had to be number one in this list. It's absolutely stunning. I implore you to go and look it up. It's stunning, gorgeous, beautiful. You got a lot of different color changes through it. It's not really a plant you can get bored by. Absolutely love them. They propagate really well as well, to be honest. They're not the quickest in the world, but they do propagate all right. So if you're thinking about investing in one, it's not a bad investment to make. And that concludes my top 10 color changing philodendron for you to try. If you are a bit sick of variegation, but you're also a little bit sick of just plain green, maybe this year can be the year of color changing plants. I propose that as an option this year. Let's do some color changing plants. Thank you very much for spending your time with me today. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It really helps. It lets me know I'm doing a good job and you're enjoying the content that I make. If you'd like to see any more videos and you are not already subscribed, because fun fact, over 50% of my audience that watch my videos each week are not actually subscribed. So if you would like to do so, feel free. The button should be down below. It's down below on a phone. I think it might be the same on a PC as well. Feel free to do that. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. If you have any cool color changing plant ideas please feel free to leave them down below and i think i will see you in the next video bye guys